Hello and welcome to Geeky Bit. Today we're doing a tutorial about making an image from scratch for a blue SCSI or a raw SCSI device. To make our image from scratch, there are several ways to do this. We're going to use DD, specifically DD for Windows. DD is built into Linux as well as Mac OS already, but we're going to download it for Windows. So we start by going to this website here. Take a look at there's what it is. Now, what we do is we go to oh, downloads. Oh, no, no, no. This is the wrong section. I need to go back. So we'll go back. We go down here to the bottom and then we're going to go ahead and select the 0.04 beta 4. And then we'll wait for this. You could also donate. It's definitely a good cause. Go ahead and click save and then we click OK. And then once it's downloaded, we're going to go ahead and go to the download folder, open it up, and we're going to copy everything. And then we are going to go ahead and put it in its own directory. And here we go. Here's our directory. We paste it. And there we go. Okay, here I already have a window open where I've already typed some stuff. Of course, I've done it incorrectly. Here is how you do it correctly. And uh, we will do a two count so we can have a two gigabyte file. And it'll take a while to write. Now you can do this in Linux or Mac OS as well. You will have to, of course, change where you output. And the of equals is where you put your output. So there we go. There's our file right there. And it's two gigabytes. So great. Everything should be good to go. Next, we are going to want to do something that I like to call blessing the DD image. It's a throwback from old computer terms like where you'd bless a hard drive. So to bless this image file, we will need to do a few things first. We will need to either have a disk image that boots or a disk or a CD or something so we can boot up on a Mac, even a hard drive that currently boots. I happen to have an already working boot image. So here we are on the Macintosh itself. We're going to click up on setup and repair, and then we're going to go to Lido or Lido, and we're going to go into that folder, and then we're going to launch the application. Now, once we have it open, we'll go ahead and click OK here. And when it scans the SCSI bus, you're going to see something interesting. So obviously nothing here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. And hey, look, there's that drive, not a Macintosh disk. So it needs to be blessed. As you can see, our Mac disk is that way. And I'd show you the customized partition. But here's the thing. You can't show it because, you know, it's busy. It's <laughs> the boot drive. So if we go to the Macintosh hard drive that says not a Macintosh disk and we go up to partition, watch this. We go to customize. It'll spit out an error at us. Hey, <laughs> You need to format it, something's wrong here. So that's easy enough to do. So we go ahead and click format and we go ahead and click okay here. And it's gonna spit out some more errors at us, but that's fine because it's, you know, just an image file at this point in time, it doesn't understand. So there we go, it uh, will do that, click okay. And now we have no volume. This is good because now it's blessed, so to speak, but let's customize a partition so we'll go here and let's select this image and then let's click OK all right and here we go see there's the blessing portion of the, the file right there so put those two teeny little partitions at the front now let's go ahead and we're gonna select this area right here and make our own Macintosh volume and we're going to go ahead and use the entirety of the space here which is the 2097104, click OK. And then I was thinking about what to name this volume. I thought, well, maybe you should call it test, but I was like, no, because we know it'll work. And then I was like, you know what? Custom disk. That would definitely be a good name. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll click OK. Now we click done and it's going to do some things. It takes a little bit of time. It's basically uh, doing everything it needs to do to make this a working hard drive from its standpoint. And then we will spit back out to the menu here. And as you can see, there's custom disk. So we got it working. 
And as you can see when we get it open, it is a 2 gigabyte disk and it's completely empty. Before we go back over to the emulator to do stuff to that disk, I want to show you something rather interesting. So here I am booted up to a different SD card with different disk images on it. And we're going to go to setup and repair in this one and go to Lido or however it's pronounced here. And then we're going to launch the application because if you notice, I've got three disks there plus a game disk and a Mac disk. And I want to show you the actual, how many actual partitions there are because it's very interesting. And once the application loads, we will see here it's scanning and look, there's only three drives and one drive is 10 gigabytes. So that 10 gigabyte drive has three different volumes on it. Now I want to show you the partition information. So once we go into here, we'll click OK. Now, once it loads up, I want to show you something that I think is interesting. We can have four gigabyte drives but this is the exact maximum number of kilobytes that it'll allow us to allocate per partition. So 4030423K. All right, let's go set up our volume back on the emulator. Okay, we have the Sheep Shaver GUI window open here for our settings. Now we have our USB drive. And on Windows, we can just drag and drop, but on the Mac, you have to browse to it. So we'll just drop it over here and then we click start and then dragging our window over here. As you can see, here's custom disk. So let's rename it. We will call it Mac HD. All right. And we'll click on it. And as you can see, yep, two gigabytes. So we'll go ahead and we can go to a legacy recovery go to Mac OS and then let's go to system 7.5 and then we'll do an install. We'll just wait on it here and then click continue and then switch to the correct disk and install. And as we've seen the install before, we'll just go through it and have it ready to go. And now that's done. Here is our Mac HD all ready to go and boot off of. Okay, we have our mouse and there we go. Happy Mac. We're good to go. You've done everything just like I showed you in this tutorial, but somehow it's still not working. So this section is for troubleshooting. So let's put our SD card back in our computer and see if a log file was written. As you can see in this image, that's what it should look like if a log file was written. Now let's open up that log file and examine it. It should look something like this if it was correct. So if we open up the SD card but have no log file and some flashing lights on our blue SCSI shown here, we probably have some other issues. If this was a kit and not a pre-assembled unit, let's take a look at the solder points on the micro SD card adapter and make sure we have them correct. This is an image that shows them all soldered correctly you may have a little more solder than this on yours, but make sure there are no solder bridges. If that was good, let's go ahead and use the SD card formatter utility. We will go ahead and do a overwrite format on our SD card, and you can download it from a link in the description. After you use the SD formatter tool, if it's still not working and you've tried everything else, you may want to try a different SD card, preferably another brand if you have one. Something to note also, if you have a Mac Plus, you may need to do a diode mod for it to work correctly. Lastly, if all else fails, you can always go check out the Discord for Open Retro SCSI as there is a blue SCSI support section there and a link to that Discord is in the description below. I hope this video tutorial helped you and you are on your way getting your retro Macintosh up and running with old games and applications and just the way you wanted it. And if you like this, feel free to click that like button and if you aren't subscribed so already, feel free to do so and if you'd like to get notifications of my future videos click that bell button